Of course, I get a phone call as soon as I... Yeah, uh, of course, as soon as I go on live, I started getting phone calls. Art and Coffee is basically just a uh, live stream painting session where we can all hang out, drink coffee, and chat. Obviously, I'll be, dre I'll be addressing some main topics like for uh, episode one for today, I'll be addressing, uh, giving you guys some advice and some tips on how to get started as an artist. And, um, you know, I have some bullet points over here that uh, might be able to help you out to get you started. Some of the stuff that I've, um, some of the stuff on the bullet points are actually uh, things that I've done in the past to get me started. So. I guess basically like this platform is just I'm just using this as a way to share some knowledge and to um, give advice to uh, beginner artists you know this is like for this episode it's not necessarily you know for the experts out there the expert artists the well-established artists they don't need this so this is more like for the uh, beginner artists out there that are trying to gain some knowledge and experience on how to become an artist and then after that i will be addressing some uh questions that i got from instagram i'll be giving everyone some shout outs and um i'll be tagging them along as well when i reposted this on instagram i'll be posting bits uh, bits and pieces like clips and stuff so that way people who ask questions that's not able to make it today I can make a clip of it, post it on Instagram, and um, so that way they know that I've addressed their question. So episode one is obviously starting out kind of rough. I um, as soon as I was about to hit live, I got a phone call, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's just and then my. I had to get my coffee, I had to get everything set up, so, and then I was getting some, uh, some negative feedback on my Streamlabs, so it's kind of a, all in all, a perfect storm, if, if you know what I mean, like, it's, it's one of those things, it's like, you thought, like, I tested it this morning, I woke up at, like, 6 in the morning to test everything out, and sure enough, like, things will still go wrong right to the point where you're about to go live um but uh, finally i was able to fix it on time uh we've said i'm late i'm not late though his clock is just uh ahead so don't believe him <laughs> what's up dr eyebrow what's up man 155 day mirror looks clean sweet all right so this is official. Welcome to the first episode of Art and Coffee, where we hang out and create art and drink our favorite liquid. I don't need the introduction. You all know who I am. Let's just get into it. So, just a brief introduction of what I'm doing right now. It's just, I'm painting... Uh, Baki Yujiro Hanma uh, from Baki so I'm painting the demon back obviously everyone know how iconic this is this is actually my second time painting uh, Yujiro Hanma and I know it looks very similar to the first one that I've done before but you know it it's a slight there's a slight change in there what's up iconic it's very nice to see you here man but anyways, we're here to chill. We're here to talk. This is not a podcast at all. This is not by any means like the way I presented it on Instagram is super like official, I guess. But because people are asking me, oh, you do you got a podcast? You got a podcast? I'm like, no, it's not a podcast. It's just, you know, <clears throat> it's just Twitch. So this is not a podcast. This is basically just a platform for us to just hang out and chill while i paint and you know while you guys ask questions or interact and just have a have a you know a human conversation you know just something that <clears throat> i think it's lacking nowadays is just people are so into 
you know, fast pace of living life and just worrying about certain things. But let's just, you know, I think what I'm going to do every Monday or so, or I might, I'm still not set on the date. I'm right now. It's Monday. I might do it every Sunday, but you know, maybe once a week we'll do art and coffee uh, until I figure out certain days and certain schedule. Um, we could basically, you know, learn from that and and go from there. So it's, <laughs> but right now it's it's all an experiment. But basically, what it is is just for us to just. Uh, sit down, relax, have some coffee and paint. Basically what it is. Let me get a sip of coffee and we'll get into uh, the main topic of the day, which is how to start as an artist. All right, so to me, just my personal experience, how I got started as an artist. I did not have a niche. So I basically all I did was I drew things that I like. Obviously, I liked anime. Um, and that's basically how it evolved into many avenues like learning anatomy, learning lights, learning certain techniques. I played around with multiple mediums from watercolor, oil pastels, uh, and now I'm using leather acrylic. So I would suggest if you're an artist starting out and you have no portfolio, like you have no risk at all. You, you should just go try for everything that you like. If you want to paint and draw anime, do it. If you want to be a portrait artist, do it. You know, you want, you love to paint animals, go paint animals. I know uh, Dr. Eyebrow over here, he has a, uh, a TikTok called The Ink King where he draws illustrations and uh, he draw, uh, um, um, he draws um, animals and he illustrates books. I mean, he even wrote books and published a couple of books already, so. <laughs> We got a lot of a lot of talented people in the chat already. <clears throat> um, yeah, let's get some painting done here. <clears throat> right now, I'm just kind of doing some outline for Baki's back, the demon back. Everyone loves that; very iconic. Anyways, so how to get started as an artist? So my tip number one is basically just do it. Um, that's basically <laughs> to the simple, if you break it down to its core, it's just the matter of doing it. If you wanna be an artist, create art. If you wanna be a videographer, make videos. You don't have to have fancy equipments. You don't have to have DSLRs or you know, you don't have to have expensive paintbrush. You got pencil, pen, paper. I mean, I started <clears throat> when I was in uh, elementary school, I started with my notebooks. I didn't have any sketch pads. I used my notebooks and whatever scrap paper I found lying around. And that's how pretty much I got started. And anything I was inspired about, uh, while mainly it was anime, I was also inspired by nature. So I would literally just, um, draw trees, draw clouds, whatever I see that I think would be a good practice. Um, we did have a lot of trees, <laughs> obviously. I grew up in the Philippines, uh, uh, in the rice paddy uh, uh, province of the Philippines. So it's, we had a lot of trees and clouds. So I was, I, I was able to get a lot of real life uh, inspiration from uh, my environment. And finding a paper or a canvas or whatever and just do it man as simple as that <laughs> fully agree yeah thank you iconic chaos man i appreciate you being here man don't lose anything from it uh but gain but can gain heaps yeah exactly so whatever you do man it's like dumb it's like Y'all know uh, 
Kobe Bryant. I don't know how many people watch basketball here, but you know, Kobe Bryant would practice more than anyone else. You know, he would be in the gym before practice and he would still be in the gym after practice. It's the same it's the same mindset, you know. It's that's why they call it the Mamba mentality, you know, like, well, obviously, <clears throat> I don't glorify overworking. It's not about that. If you're getting started and you're trying to experiment with things, finding stuff uh, that you like to do, uh, experimenting with many different things is important. And doing more than others is also very important because that's how you gain experience uh, experience in a very little amount of time so let's say like okay you're not you don't, you're not into basketball if you're like weebs you only watch anime you don't know anything about sports right so let me put it into the anime context uh for example naruto right he's got the shadow clone jutsu how did how did he learn to master the rasengan in such a short amount of time he multiplied himself, right? Obviously, you can't do that. Obviously, you, none of you are shinobis, okay? You can't multiply yourself. But one thing, one thing that actually helped me is actually um, outdoing everyone else. So it's <laughs> throwing shade. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting this on my clips. When I when I cut this into pieces, you're gonna be I'll be throwing shade. Um, but anyways, yeah. So you can't be you're not a shinobi. You you can't multiply yourself. So how how are you gonna you know learn something in such a short amount of time? Well, one of the secrets. Ah, it's not really a secret, but like one of the things I did when I was starting out is I would you know work and draw things that I like, right? But I would do it more than everyone else. It 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 basically becomes an obsession. At one point, you start doing things and you're like, this is just what I want to do all day long. And it becomes an obsession. Um, it became to a point where <laughs> I'm using my notebooks for my class. Instead of taking notes, I was making art. So now I don't, I don't, you know, I don't advocate you not to study school uh, in school, but, you know, I got in trouble multiple times for not listening to teachers and just you know, not taking notes and basically just uh, <laughs> pretty much filling up my, my notebook with just a bunch of sketches. Most of the time, a lot of it is um, filled up with uh, <laughs> with Dragon Ball Z characters like Goku doing the Kamehameha. Dude, I have, I have pages and pages of Goku doing Kamehameha in the same exact pose every single time. And, I, and you can see the progression. Because I, I specifically chose that pose of him because it was the hardest one to do. And the very first one looks like crap. Okay. But by the time I got to the end of the notebook, I was able to like not master, but basically get a decent enough image to make it look like he's actually doing the, the pose with the hands and the fingers and everything. Because obviously hands are the hardest thing for artists to draw. So that's what I focused on because at some point after a few try I was able to draw his face pretty good but by the time I get I got to the end of my notebook um, I was able to make his hands look decent so and that's really how you can see your progression it's just you start something you do it over and over and over until um, you actually you know are happy with the results yeah, some people call it insanity, but hey, we're artists, right? So, yeah, we're insane like that. <clears throat> uh, Iconic Chaos said, I got in trouble a lot for filling my books with art. There you go. Yep, instead of... <laughs> now, for anybody here uh, still in school listening, I, I, you know, I do, we do not advocate that you skip class or not to study. We were just saying that it, you got to be more obsessed than the person next to you when it comes to art. That's how you, that's how you jump into to another level in such a short amount of time. Just doing more work as much as possible 
um, you know, in a very short amount of time. So that way you can master certain skills. Uh, we said a really good thing here. He said 10,000 hours of practice makes you smart, uh, makes you a master. So that's, that's true, man. Like in any trade, a lot of them would require you to, uh, to work in a field for 10,000 hours to actually master just one, one specific skill. So that's a lot of hours. I gotta get some rest, man. Y'all are getting me riled up already. Second to the list that I have over here is pick pick a niche within your passion. All right, so we've established just doing it, practicing it, being more obsessed over and over, right? Now that transition into picking a niche. Who, what do you want to be as an artist? Do you want to be a mangaka? Do you want to be an anime artist? Do you want to paint shoes? Do you want to paint canvas? I mean, there's so many avenues that you can go to. That's why the experimental phase in the beginning is so important. So that way you can learn who you are as an artist. Once you get that down, it's really easy. Like for me and a lot of anime artists uh, on TikTok, Instagram, or Twitch, you'll see a lot of us in our portfolio, we have a lot of anime drawings, anime painting. Why? I mean, because that's that's what we love and that's what we were became, uh, become to known as. Um, it doesn't mean that we can't do anything else. It just means that finding success uh, you know, usually comes from doing something in a specific niche. So, for example, if I'm doing anime today and tomorrow, like, for example, uh, if I'm painting shoes today and tomorrow I'm telling people, okay, check out my landscape painting, guys. People will be like, okay, aren't you like an anime artist? But you're doing landscape too. Okay, cool. You could do a lot of things. There's no denying that, but you won't attract a lot of people by doing that because it's so diverse. It's so vast that you're just going to end up confusing people one day. So there is a reason why when I started my TikTok account, I did not post a lot of my other art. I only post anime stuff because that's what I want it to be known as. It doesn't mean I can't do anything else. Um, to be honest with you, I actually started as, as a graphic designer. Uh, when I was in the military, I was doing illustrations for my unit, doing t-shirt designs. Uh, I was painting murals and then I developed into being a portrait artist, painting families, painting fallen comrades. And then when I got out of the military, I started, you know, finding what I want to do, you know, for me specifically, you know, like I said, if even in, you know, a very early age, I loved anime and I love drawing anime. So I went back into doing that. I started going to art conventions like comic cons, anime cons. <clears throat> I started selling prints. Um, and then I started, um, somebody asked me if I could paint a pair of shoes one day. And it, I mean, it just kind of evolved from there. And now obviously I'm painting weightlifting belts. So, and now you see my TikTok, all majority of my TikTok is just full of videos, just full of um, weightlifting belts. I am still taking commission for shoes. Um, just, uh, it's just, not enough order for shoes right now because like i said i'm known as the weightlifting belt guy so most of my client now are weightlifting belts so um so I, I keep burping just need to drink more coffee anyways um yes so that's part of picking a niche man it, it's hard because as an artist, you want to show the world you can do more, right? But 
you're not established artist yet at this point in time in our conversation you're not established artist yet i know you want to show the world more um because that's just human nature that's who we are that's why we became artists is we want to express our ideas and our um imaginations to the world but as of right now to as just starting out i would suggest picking a niche first once you get a hold of that market you can start introducing your own art you know what i mean like once you've gained the attention of an audience after picking a niche after being successful in a niche start introducing them to things that you want to do personally like let's say uh if you're an okay most of the people here are anime watchers anyway so if you're an anime artist right and you're like man i don't want to do i don't want to do anime for life um i really want to show people what i'm about as an artist you know i'm i'm, I'm deeper than this i don't just want to copy other people's work because basically that's what it is let's face it anime is just you copying other people's work and that's exactly what I'm doing right now um, you could start introducing like okay well you can um, you can start introducing stuff like you know drawing your own character you know what I mean like if there is a transition like I guess what I'm trying to say is if there's a transition phase uh, within your niche like let's say you you started out as an anime artist but want to introduce other people to what you want you got to have some kind of transition phase where you're still relating it to anime but slowly introducing them to new and exciting things basically getting them hype more and more about your original stuff just little bit by little bit it doesn't mean that you totally quit doing anime but you go into you know, at that point, you, you just need to make sure you, you do the transition um, uh, slowly because I don't know if there's any, if there's a lot of historians out here, but I've learned from uh, history classes that uh, when monarchs and new government take over, they don't, uh, the successful ones, okay, uh, if you read the book, uh, the Prince by Machiavelli, it says in there, a successful conqueror um, don't just introduce new policies to the, to the people he's conquered, right? A lot of the people, most of the time, like, you know, a, a successful monarch, when they conquered a, a new city, they make sure the city the city's tradition, culture, are, you know, preserved. Basically, you don't you don't change a thing, but you'll introduce new things slowly but surely. So, um, that's just like an example. I know that's kind of way off topic, but what I'm trying to say is that once you gain attention of the audience, don't just all of a sudden abruptly introduce something new. Slowly build it up. Okay, basically that's what I'm doing here with you guys. So, <laughs> oh man. Um. Anyways, so okay, we're we're rolling the ball. Just do it. Pick a niche. Now create a portfolio. Not gonna. I'm not gonna dive deep into this because I think I'll I'll have a separate video about creating a portfolio. But right now, the most important thing is just once you pick a niche, pick. Don't put all your art one thing i would just say about portfolio is that don't put all of your artwork in the portfolio pick a target and choose a few good ones that you've done and put it on that portfolio a good portfolio like if you shown three images in your portfolio and show that to someone that's you know they would already know what you're all about so it doesn't have to be all your work Maybe just some important big budget projects and stuff like that that can entice. Like if you're trying to work for a company or if you're trying to um, attract 
high dollar client. So, I mean, <clears throat> let's face it. I charge almost from two grand to almost $3,000 for these belts. Okay. And that doesn't happen overnight. It's a gradual increase in pricing. But the way I do it is I put all of it in a gallery in my website and put it as a portfolio type base so people can see the amount of work I put into it, the amount of details. And most of the time, that's not even enough. You got to put some kind of testimonials, um, you know, explaining what it is. So you're, you're even saying this is I'm using leather paint. It took me 60 hours to do this. Uh, you know, this is how it's done, blah, blah, blah. You know, you got to be a really good writer, I guess. I mean, I mean, not really good, but just a decent enough writer to explain what you're all about. Because images and portfolio is good, but that's not enough to like really entice uh, the high dollar uh, uh, clients. I'll leave it at that. So the next bullet here I got is, it says get inspired, do not copy. So pretty much that's what I've done, man. I looked at other artists that came before me, uh, used their work to get inspired. So basically what that means is just don't copy their, their stuff, right? But get inspired means like honor their stuff in a way that's not offensive or in a way that you can make things better. If, if you see someone doing, uh, okay, for example, there's a lot of, really great and talented artists uh, in the anime custom community okay but a trend that I see all the time is people literally just copying the image from Google and putting it on the shoes and they're proud of their line work they're proud of their color you know nothing's wrong with that they're proud of their work as you should be but that's the one thing I saw on on the anime uh, custom community is a lot of them, a lot of the work has started to become similar to each other. Most of the time, you don't even know who's painting the shoes because the line work is the same, color palette's the same. It's just a copy of another artist onto another and so on and so forth. And then you, lo you get lost in the system because no one knows who you are no one knows what you're all about they see something okay i've seen that before so many times what makes you unique why why would i spend thousands of dollars for a custom shoes or custom belt from you um <clears throat> so the answer to that all i'm saying is just differentiate yourself when it comes to inspiration do not copy so what I started doing is I see a lot of people, okay, that's really good. That's line, that's clean light work, but how can I stand out from the rest of the crowd? Well, this is how you do it. Okay. That also comes back to my, our last topic, which is picking a niche. So like I said, I started out as a graphic designer, evolved into a portrait artist. And so my, uh, my realistic style uh, transferred over into doing anime. Most of the time, if you've seen my work, there's not a lot of line work. Maybe on the faces, just to make sure that you can still recognize the character. Because if you make an anime character too realistic, they look freaking weird, okay? They look, they look scary as hell. Don't do that. Um, but... When you look at my work, most of the time, it has a blend of, I would just say semi, it's because they're not realistic at all, but I would just say a blend of uh, semi-realistic tone into them. Not a lot of line work. And people, um, especially on TikTok, uh, people actually, um, uh, uh, people actually like that. Uh, I was able to to show off uh, my art and I was able to stand out from the rest of uh, the competition because the style is so different. But yet, it's the same. 
like uh, I don't know if you guys know the famous brand cost that's the way they do man they take something iconic and similar and very familiar to the eyes of people but then they change things to it to make it different so that's basically I, like, I'm giving out a lot of secret here so take something familiar differentiate it to where it's still recognizable but different and I promise you you'll stand out <clears throat> and yeah style will come later that's not a thing that you need to worry about if you're just a beginner keep making art that you like do not worry about style uh okay weeb said i used to be proficient in tech i need to get back at it okay i believe you uh videos from customers would probably help yo so okay we've said just something you know a very important thing for us to note um videos from customers help i did that a lot when i was starting out uh, on instagram i would ask my clients to send me videos opening boxes reaction videos and stuff like that and they're more than happy to do it most of them are except you get you get sometimes you get some people that are introverts and they don't want to show their face they don't which is fine don't for, don't force your client to do reaction videos if they don't want to but anyways if they re, if but if you ask them you know most of them would say yeah they will like you know gladly help you out because it's it's a value for value kind of world um yeah, once they send you a video, ask them for a permission to post it on your social media and then post it up, man. No one's stopping you. Like, speaking of, yeah, we'll get into my last, okay, my last bullet point is actually social media. So, um, uh, we'll get into that. But yeah, so client testimonials definitely help. Uh, Iconic Chaos said, I fully agree. Uh, it's why I try to bring more painter vibe into my stuff rather than making it exact copies. Yeah, agree there, iconic. Uh, I fall into that trap, though, trying to keep the client as up. Yo, okay, let's talk about that. That's <clears throat> that's every artist trap, right? You want to do such a really good job, you you end up spending countless hours on projects, making your client as happy as possible. For what? For what? 500 bucks? I mean, 200 bucks? I, I don't know. Yeah, so a lot of many artists that are beginners, um, they charge so little and they work so much. Running out of coffee, I might get some more. But yeah, that's important, Iconic Chaos. Like, just remember, Remember your client's budget. Know yourself. Know how much you can accomplish in a certain amount of time. And price accordingly, please. Do not fall into a trap making your... Ha uh, it's good to make them happy, obviously. But do not overwork yourself. Do not sacrifice health, mental health. All that stuff just for... You know a few hundred bucks don't do that so <clears throat> all right just to finish that conversation last but not least is marketing right social media picking the right platform well, i'll tell you what there's no right or wrong platform it can be pinterest it can be instagram facebook TikTok, whatever you want to choose, right? It's not about the platform. It's about how many audience. Because I was, I had Instagram. I've, I've had Instagram for what over ten years now, and I still have seven thousand followers over there. So, which reminds me, if you guys are watching, go follow me on Instagram. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, uh, pick don't just pick one okay i guess the main goal of that is don't pick one platform try many different ones because you can always repost some stuff um like if you make a TikTok, 
save that TikTok and post it on Reels and post it on YouTube. I mean, it's easy, man. Just pick. Don't just choose one. Also, don't don't spend a lot of time trying to impress other artists on Instagram. Don't do that. Your main goal right now as an artist is attracting clients. Uh, as a beginner artist, I should say. As a beginner artist, your main goal is attracting clients. You're not there to, to gain the loyalty of other artists and you're not there to buy from other artists and they are not there to buy from you, okay? But it is also important to engage in the community. So while I'm saying is that, yeah, it's nice to be friends with other artists, networking, sharing stuff, being friendly, da da da, and engaging, commenting. That's all um, a good strategy to you know build camaraderie in the community, but also attracting more clients. You know what I mean? Because if you're engaging with other communities, like especially if you're engaging on bigger pages, you're commenting on their stuff all the time, eventually that big creator might see that comment or other people in the comments might see your comment and follow you. So, you know, but just don't spend too much time and thinking too much into it. Just do whatever is natural because um, as a beginner artist, you're not going to get a lot of respect. Let's be honest here, okay? As a beginner artist, you're not going to get a lot of respect from the big time creators. Don't expect them to follow you back. Okay? Because they're busy as hell. They probably don't even know who you are. You know, they're doing other things. Right? It's not like they're too too big and, and you know, too... They're not, they're not all jerks. Alright? That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying they might be too busy to do all that with you. Um, what I'm saying is, yeah, focus on attracting clients. Uh... Like what I did on Instagram, okay, like, and on TikTok. Um, post some stuff that you think a customer would like. And then, that's why I started doing, um, when I started out, you see you know, on my Instagram, you see uh, a bunch of pictures of my clients wearing the shoes I painted for them. It's 9 o'clock. Oh, wow, it's 9 o'clock already. Oh, I've been talking for for an hour. Um, yeah, so I'll finish this topic and then I'll answer some questions on Instagram because I promise people I'll answer their questions from Instagram. So I'll do that real quick after this. So, yeah, I mean, y'all got me riled up, man. Like this, I love doing this art and copy. I love talking to you guys. I love that you guys are talking in the chat. So I appreciate you guys for showing up today and just um, having conversations with me about art. Especially Iconic Chaos, man. You're the real MVP today, man. I appreciate you for joining. For reals, man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, maybe have your clients send you pictures of their shoes, their stuff. Or if you don't have clients, you know, draw something for family. Draw something for yourself. You know, paint a shoe for yourself and wear it. Take pictures of it. Because... If you put, if you post a picture on Instagram, oh, okay. If you put a picture on Instagram where a human being is wearing your products, um, the human psychology will think, okay, that guy looks cool in those shoes. I want that. You know why all the other commercials have people that look so relatable? wearing things that they are selling it's because it's about the psychology okay post somebody wearing your stuff it will attract people that relates to that uh picture so we can i'll, I'll talk more about social media i feel like this is a lot to cover actually so the main topic is how to become an artist to get started but that's just six bullet points like an hour conversation does not even begin to cover all of it or any of it so we'll save some other conversation for later streams but right now these are just generic ideas to get you started we've said every time I paint something I really want it ends up getting so there you go paint something for yourself 
even if you don't have clients paint something do something show something that you're busy you're always working because staying busy is also what attracts clients by the way if you're staying consistent and you're always there like i don't care right some people will say hey man you post too much on tiktok hey man i've seen this artwork before why are you posting like three or four different pictures of it because that's how you get into people's mind okay it's not about posting over and over the same thing but it's about having a presence right people that support you will support you and be there no matter what people that is annoyed that you post different angles of multiple shoes they're not really there to support you if they get annoyed so and and the chances are they probably have not bought anything from you so you don't want them as a client anyways because they're not there to support you um there you go <clears throat> but i'm i'm gonna relax i'm gonna address some comment on the chat and uh do some painting here Okay, so that is the main topic. I hope you guys learned. I know that's a lot of information, but this is just like first day in class orientation, right? There's always so much. It's overwhelming. Sometimes the teacher talks over and over and over, saying the same exact sentences and phrases over and over. It's because it's to get it in your head, okay? That's all it is. That's why, that's why teacher says things over and over I was a I was an instructor uh, my last couple of years in the military I taught uh, professional military education okay so I know how to talk to people and most of the times it gets repetitive but that's how they learn man it's it you gotta drill things into people's mind okay all right so I hope you learned something that's the main topic all right so First question on Instagram, uh, Maria Tandra says on Instagram, uh, what merch do you have? Um, actually, that's a really good question. I don't have any merch available on the website yet, but I will. I have some uh, draft in my store right now ready to go. All I need to do is press live on it. So that way people can purchase a t-shirt, uh, prints, uh, coins, stickers, you know, the whole nine yard, whatever. Um, but yeah, so great question. Thank you, uh, Maria. And uh, hopefully you're watching this. If not, I'll give you a shout out on Instagram. Second question is Lockdown Lay. He said, he asks, uh, do you have a favorite piece of all the things you painted so far? Yes. My favorite belt that I painted so far is the Jujutsu Kaisen black and white and blue monochrome belt that I painted for um, uh, Crunchy Swall, another anime lifter um, who sells his own uh, merchandising and or, uh, original anime uh, slash lifting mashup uh, type of designs. Really, really good guy and have a lot of... Um, great quality merch on its own too so i actually got some of his merch right now and uh, i'd like to do an unboxing for you guys soon so that's a that's a great question uh thank you lockdown lay uh iconic chaos said i need to update my merch yeah um dude i love your merch man i love the backpacks guys if you guys are watching this right now uh go check out my friend iconic chaos he does some of them like amazing uh, backpacks, shoes, jackets, denim, you name it. Dude is very talented, all right? I'm very like, I'm, I'm thrilled that he's over here watching me right now because he doesn't need any of this advice I'm giving because he's already a pro. So go check him out. Next question from Instagram from 3T Customs. A favorite medium to paint on? Favorite medium to paint on is obviously belt. It's what made me successful so far, and this is probably going to be my favorite um, for a long while. So, thank you for asking, uh, 3T Customs. I'll give you a shout-out uh, on Instagram. 
how much time do you spend on painting on average? Eesh. Thank you, King, for that question, because that's that's a good question, man. On average, I would probably say 50 to 60 hours. That's just, there's no getting around to it. I, the very first belt I've ever done was 150-ish hours. So I managed to get faster, but, you know, I can only paint as fast as humanly possible, man. With the amount of details I put into this belt, it's, it's tough to just do it under 30. <laughs> All right. Next question by Kevin uh, something. Kevin something. Uh, what types of what type of are you using for outlines uh there must have been a typo there but yeah for outlines i don't do much outlines you can see uh, i mean there's outlines here but i don't do much outlines is i like to do i like to blend my color in a semi-realistic fashion uh i like to um i like to give it some depth and um outlines you know it, it becomes very cartoonish in my opinion which you know nothing wrong with outlines obviously i i do outlines as well like most of the time like on the face right here i do outlines just because you know it's still an anime it's still a drawing uh mid um uh, uh format so you gotta show the characters um uh, uh familiarity to the audience so Outlines is definitely important. I just don't do them a lot. So thank you for that question. Last question from Instagram comes from Art of Chris Thomas. Uh, he said he asks, "What's been one of the hardest struggles as an artist, and how did you get through it?" That's a tough question. Why you gotta ask that? <laughs> um, hardest struggles, man. I would say emotionally a lot a lot of the art stuff can be emotionally draining especially if you're surrounded by other artists especially if you follow a lot of big artists out there and you see their success over and over every day they come out with new things how are they producing this do do they even sleep you know the competitive side inside of me it, it it makes it very emotionally challenging because you want to do good you want to do better but then all of a sudden you, you see this great artist just doing stuff and you can't hate on them you know what i mean they're good they've paid their dues so i guess what i'm saying my biggest struggle is just mentally being like bombarded with um different things and ideas surrounding me with you know other artists out there doing different stuff and it's easy to get lost in it because you're like well your anxiety your um, doubt and anxiety starts to creep in and you're like you start doubting yourself and asking yourself like okay am I good am I am I good enough am I worthy am i you know what i mean all of that so i guess what i'm trying to say is the hardest struggle i've had is just doubts fears and anxieties man just making sure that um i am good enough to to charge what i charge people and to make you know and to stand out from the crowd so but that's not very that's not rare every artist have that so i i feel like that sounds like a very cliche that sounds like a very cliche answer, but to me, that's still the biggest thing in me. It's like, like they said, yeah, you get that, you get that imposter syndrome, like, like you feel like you don't belong, you know, it's, it's, a, it's tough, man. That's why you find that's, you know, it's very important to find real friends. And real friends that does the same stuff like you do. Real artist friends. Like Weaves, you know, we got Leslie, we got 
um, Dr. Eyebrow slash the inking, you know, Mashi, you know, Lenka, you know, just have a group of friends that supports you, um, you know, to help you deal with a lot of the emotional stuff. Um, just having someone to talk to about certain things. It doesn't have to be always talking about problems and issues. Just have someone to conversate with every day. Because as artists, we're always loners. I'm always alone. Like when I'm painting in my, you know, in my uh, studio here, just by myself, I'm just listening to music. So sometimes when you paint for the long time, uh, the, the, the anxiety creeps in, you started thinking a lot, you start thinking about, you know, your mind goes to different places uh, full of negativity. So it's good to just find, you know, friendships and, and have someone to talk to. So that's basically how I'm going through it right now. I, I, I wouldn't say I've got through it, but that's how everybody else is, man. You just go through life. So thank you for that question, uh, Art of Chris Thomas. I'll make sure to give you a shout out on Instagram. All right, guys, that's it. I'm going to end the live here so that way it can cut the stream. So that way I can post the whole thing on YouTube. Um, if you guys want to hang out, I will probably go live on TikTok again uh, after lunch. But right now, all I want to do is concentrate on painting this. And getting some lunch so I appreciate I appreciate you guys for watching and I okay so I will announce the next episode of art and coffee on Instagram because I don't know if I want to do it on Monday still because Saturday or Sunday might be a better options um, I will okay you know what I'm gonna put a poll on Instagram asking you guys what you guys what day would you prefer because uh, Monday, you know, people go to work on Monday. That's not a lot, you know what I mean? Like, it's nuts. But maybe on the weekends I can do uh, art and coffee in the morning. And I get it, it's really early. That's why the weekend would might be better so that way people don't have to work and they can wake up and watch it on their phone. Um, so I'll do that. And uh, in the meantime, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you guys for all the questions, for all the interactions. And for uh, indulging my insanity. Have a great day.